Um, in a sense, it can be good, but also in a sense, it can be very, very violent, right? It can be very, very bad. The example of um, um, the, the story of Anastasia and the Romanovs overthrowing um, those with power is a bad example as far as the imposition of the masses on the aristocracy. The example of lynching, for example, would be a bad example, or, or, or even, um, um, well, yeah, lynching would be the best example, would be an example of the masses imposing itself on the minority, right, so that the masses can do tremendous things, uh, and it's important in a sense that we govern and control uh, the masses. Well, with respect to this government, governance, then, um, Gasset, and what I love about his read in, in this book in particular, one is very, very short. You can, you can go through this book, um, and I'm an extremely slow reader because, I mean, I'm meticulous in my read, so it takes me a while to go through a text. But you could read a book like Gasset um, on and off. This might take you, you know, two weeks if you're a slow reader. If you're a fast reader, you can probably read this in a day or two, right? Um, some people, like my wife, she could probably read this in a few hours, <laughs> but I'm not that type of reader. Um, so with respect to this, it's not, it's not a hard read, it's not in, in, intimidating, and hopefully it'll be less intimidating uh, if you read it and, and you view the videos to have an understanding of it. Um, but as we said, this ability for the masses to impose itself, right, this imposition of the masses, this attempt for the masses to, to impose itself on the aristocracy and the minority needs to be regulated, it needs to be governed, right? Um, and obviously those with legislative and regulative power need to control it, and he addresses that. Um, uh, he says, legislation is the framework for public life. So let's look at that section. So Gassette, and this is still in chapter 2, on um, the idea of level, and we're, gonna, we're, we're getting close to the idea of leveling. Like, he says, today, the ideal has been changed into reality, not only in legislation, which is the mere framework of public life, legislation, which is the framework of public life, and I'll draw that in a second, but in the heart of every individual, whatever his ideas may be, and even if he be a reactionary in his ideas, right? And that's, that's pretty heavy too, a reactionary in his ideas. So he says legislation is the framework of public life, and we know that anytime we're talking about public life, we're talking about the masses, so that the masses are framed, right? The masses are framed, bracketed. What is this bracket? Well, the first thing to, to understand is, well, what does a bracket do? The, the, the most generic example of a bracket that I can think of is a vice grip, right? So you're in a shop, and you want to hold something in place. You don't want it to fall so that you can change the structure itself. You put it in a vice grip, right? You put the thing in the vice grip, you tighten the grip, it stays in place, and now you can change the structure of whatever it is that thing might be. Well, similarly, Gassette argues that legislation is the vice grip, right? It is the, it is the framework with which the masses are controlled. Without legislation, right? Without, and this isn't even the aristocracy, there would be another level, meaning those who govern, right? Those even above aristocracy. The, the, the real source of power, the highest source, would be, you know, the presidents and the cabinets and the legislative bodies and Congress and so on. <clears throat> those with real power, those with power to affect change, um, they recognize the how fickle the masses are, right? So uh, there might be a sense, for example, just a quick tangent. Um, Stars has, and this is not a plug for Stars, right? But Stars has this new uh, series called Spartacus, and it's completely amazing. Like I'm into that whole Gladiator stuff, um, and it's just it's a really good, it's a really good series. And one Gladiator will come in, and they'll cheer for the Gladiator. They love him, but the next time he doesn't fight well, so they boo him. They hate him now. And then the next time he fights well, and they love him, and then they hate him, and then they love him, and then they hate him, and back and forth and back and forth. The masses are completely fickle. It's been true since the beginning of time. It will be true until the last day that human beings exist on this planet, and that they will eventually come, right? The masses are fickle. The masses love you. The masses hate you. They can't stand you. They can't be without you. Um, there's a very real sense of danger in that in that um, sort of oscillation in the masses, that ability to sort of sway and to be led by any whim. And what it is important for those with um, legislative power to do, and this is from Gassette, is that we frame the masses in terms of um, legislation, right? We protect the masses from themselves, but we also protect the aristocracy and the minority from the masses because it's the masses who present the greatest challenge, uh, um, challenge, greatest threat, 
but also it's the masses that obviously have the greatest number. So while they present, it's, it's this very paradoxical, and this is why I'm so fascinated by it, is this very paradoxical relationship, because the very body that presents the greatest danger is the very same body that presents the very, um, the, the largest possibility for change, for hope, right? So we have to recognize that the masses both is a tool, can be used as a tool, as a group, um, through influence um, for destruction destructive capabilities, but also can be used to, to sort of revolutionize, to change um, for the better social structure as such. Um, so that's, that's, that's very important. Okay. Um, what we recognize then is that with respect to um, this legislative um, ability, that those with political might, right, those with political power, um, are going to have to confront, especially in America, and he talks quite a bit, uh, Gassette talks quite a bit about the comparison between Europe and America in his analysis, right? Um, we're going to have to recognize the distinction in rights, R-I-G-H-T-S, the distinction in rights from a European uh, perspective and an American perspective. And I'll just give you the quick gist of it, and then I'll read it and explain it. The argument is that in Europe, Europeans had to evolve a notion of rights, right? And this is obviously emblematic in um, the United States Constitution, right? We have a Bill of Rights. That idea, that concept of rights was um, a product evolved from European sort of class progress, social conflict over uh, almost a millennia, right? Almost 2,000 years. It developed, this notion of rights developed so that Europe um, almost birthed this idea of rights. So it's a novel concept, in a sense, to Europeans, but it's precisely at the moment that the idea of rights being introduced that the United States um, gained its independence from, from Britain. So what was new in Europe is the beginning is the very foundation of American existence. Americans have a true concept of rights, and this idea of rights is fundamental to American life. It's always been. It's the foundation with which American life has been constructed from the very beginning. Conversely, that idea of rights is, he doesn't go so far to say as the end of Europe, but in a sense, it's the baton change, right? Um, Britain fell as the superpower, America rose as the new paradigm, as a new superpower, precisely because of the power, the idea, the ideology, which informs this notion of rights. It is that idea of rights that the legislative bodies, which frame the masses, attempt to um, address. You have to, in a sense, address rights, because all Americans believe that they have inalienable rights. Um, and that's a very powerful thing. Gassette and I might differ with respect to how we view rights, but this is uh, an analysis of Gassette, and to be honest with you, no matter how you view rights, how you interpret rights, um, I think it's genius that he brought it up um, and that he framed it within the particular context that he did, because I wouldn't have a, a, as full of an understanding of rights and sort of this historical progression that I just described without having read Gassette. Um, so this is what I wrote. Um, the notion of rights were an ideal, right? It's the ideal. It's an, an inalienable right is an ideal idea because really and truly, people could view you as just garbage, right? Who cares about human life? You have a right to nothing, right? I have power. You don't have power. If you interfere with me at all, you're dead. I have power. You don't have power. If you interfere with me at all, you will be supplanted, right? Um, uh, Thrasymachus, in a um, sense, um, or, or well, I'm not going to get into details, but those with power um, recognize that they have power and in a sense um, are hard to touch, right? It's easy to affect those who don't have power. It's very hard to affect those who actually do have power. 